I know a lot of other outlets have covered the Ryzen 5 5600G already, but I've got a few things I want to talk about in relation to this new APU. Now we're taking a look at this from a slightly different angle, and this was the video that was going to be on our other channel, Kernel Control, but after I started it, the whole thing took a slightly different turn. I wanted to test the 5600G the same way we usually test APUs, but as usual, I wanted to do some testing around what it would be like if you paired the 5600G with a discrete GPU as well, because then it shows you what it's like with an upgrade option. I also wanted to know what the 5600G was like when it compared to the 5600X with the discrete GPU as well, and how it compares to the Intel Core i5-11600K in relation to integrated graphics performance without a discrete GPU. So come with me on this wild and strange and potentially odd journey where we take a look at both the performance in Linux and in Windows. There's a lot of data to unpack with this video, much like our GPU and other CPU videos. There's chapters in all of these videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over that little progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say. And just to reiterate, these are the out-of-the-box figures only. We're not covering overclocking thermals or power consumption in this video. We're planning on covering that later in another video, the one over on kernel control. And also keep in mind that we can only show results from the hardware we either have right now or have previously tested. We can't show results for things we physically don't own or we haven't ever physically owned. We built a single test bench setup with the ASRock X570S Riptide as it's one of the only boards with the BIOS version that has a new enough AGISA version at the time of testing these CPUs and APU. We test it in both Windows and Linux because that's just how we do it around here. We also use this board and RAM combo to test the 5600G and 5600X. For cooling, I went with a Wraith Prism basically because they're the fastest CPU cooler to switch out when I'm removing CPUs and testing stuff. And also, so there's no deviation in thermal performance because of the cooler itself. We also assigned four gigs of VRAM to both the Intel and the AMD CPUs for testing. Strap yourself in. This one's gonna get really weird. I did say there was lots to unpack, so let's get it unpacked. Let's start off with Cinebench performance. We only tested with Cinebench R23. We have some historical data from Cinebench R23 we've collected, and we've used some of that data here for comparison. From our testing in Cinebench in both multi-core and single core, it's pretty clear that the 5600G is definitely not the fastest chip on the market, but if you're watching this video, I guess you already knew that anyway. How about a test that most people overlook? A timed Linux kernel compile test. This test is actually run with an older version of the kernel test as a majority of the CPUs that I've already tested have been tested with that kernel version as well. So it just makes it a bit more fair and it's a nice comparison. Let's move on to the APU performance in our 3D and gaming benchmarks. We made a few adjustments to our regular testing to account for the lower power and for the VRAM assignment limitations. Now we tested everything with four gigs of VRAM as I already mentioned, just to make it even with both the Intel and AMD CPUs. We ran three different benchmarks that all used the CPU and the GPU in different ways to see what this type of performance looks like in both Linux and Windows. What we're seeing here with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 720p low is that with Windows with the 5600G we're getting the best performance out of both Windows and Linux. So 50 frames per second, not too bad. Now if we take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider again but this time at 720p medium, we're seeing the 11600K does not even run this benchmark at all. We had lots of problems with this and we couldn't do it on many motherboards. At 1080p low in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're seeing that both Windows and Linux has the exact same performance. 
in Unigen Superposition, we're seeing 61 frames per second at 720p low, and it is the best performing in Windows with the 5600G. At 720p medium, we're seeing the 5600G in Windows also performing the best out of the batch as well. Lastly, at 1080p low, we're also seeing that the 5600G in Windows has the best performance. On to Basemark GPU at 720p medium, we're seeing that the 5600G in Linux with Vulkan is performing the best out of the lot. At 720p max, we're also seeing that the Linux performance with the 5600G is the best of the batch. Now, this is not something you would typically see with Basemark at all. It's usually the Windows performance outpacing the Linux performance. And lastly, at 1080p medium, we're once again seeing that the Linux performance is outpacing the Windows performance. Again, not something you see every day. There is something quite interesting going on here, but <laughs> I'm not quite sure why this benchmark is uh, performing better on Linux. It's definitely usually the other way around. Okay. So now we know how the 5600G compares to the 11600K in terms of integrated GPU performance. But what about how it compares to the 5600X with the discrete GPU in both Windows and Linux as well? Let's get unpacked. Alrighty, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p high. What we're seeing here is the 5600X easily outpaces the 5600G in Linux performance. This is traditionally the case with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You will see better performance in Linux than you will with Windows. Again, at 1440p high, we're seeing the same thing being echoed here with the 5600X outpacing the 5600G in Linux once again. However, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, we're seeing the same performance with both Windows and Linux, but the 5600X does beat out the 5600G by a single frame. So for high resolution gaming so far, we can see that the CPU isn't really that much of a difference. One frame per second is within a margin of error. Moving on to Unigen Superposition at 1080p Extreme, we're seeing the 5600G and 5600X getting exactly the same results in both Windows and in Linux. At 1440p Custom, which we're seeing is usually pretty CPU bound based on all the testing we've done with this, the 5600X in Windows is the fastest, and this is down to the 5600X being an overall faster CPU. At 4K Optimize, where it's completely GPU bound, we can see that the 5600G and 5600X get exactly the same results in both Windows and Linux. No surprises here whatsoever. Moving on to Basemark GPU, the 5600G in Windows actually beat out the 5600X by a single frame. But again, that's within a margin of error. But at the end of the day, one frame is still one frame. Again, the 5600G in Windows in Basemark with Vulkan beats it out by two frames. That's starting to look slightly outside a margin of error. And lastly, the faster CPU wins at 4K with the 5600X outpacing the 5600G in Windows. Obviously, all of this testing isn't really telling the whole story. It's impossible to talk about every single thing related to any CPU, but the information here I think you might find useful if you're on the lookout for a CPU that has integrated graphics while you either wait for a GPU at a decent price or if you want something relatively low powered. We can draw a few conclusions from the 5600G from all of this data that I've shown here. One conclusion is that if you want a cheap retro gaming or emulation PC, the 5600G might actually be a pretty viable option. In fact, I'm gonna back that up and say it's a very viable option. I think for the money as well, it's a pretty good choice if you wanna pair it with a relatively cheap ITX board so you can make something compact, quiet and cheap. Another conclusion is if you're in the market for a decent CPU to pair with your more powerful GPU at a later stage, unlike the APUs of the past, I don't think you're going to be as disappointed here. The only thing lacking here is the support for PCIe 4.0. It's only PCIe 3.0. It's not a huge deal. I know some people get stuck on that detail and just can't let go of it, but it's a $259 CPU. Chill. Speaking of, 
The final conclusion is that for the value proposition at only 259 US dollars or around 399 Aussie dollars for an ultra budget gaming PC using low settings on either 720p or 1080p, I think the 5600G is acceptable. From what I can tell, it's a lot better than whatever Intel's offering for now, right? Just keep that in mind. We don't know what's gonna happen later with their integrated graphics. It's a bit of a tough verdict for me since the only time I would personally ever use a chip like this would be for a low power server or for some type of emulation box or some little tinkering machine. But the 5600G is looking to be a decent chip for both its integrated graphics and for pairing with the discrete GPU. The performance, to be absolutely honest, was a nice surprise. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Make sure you check out Kernel Control and throw it a sub. We're gonna be working on a video with the 5600G and a discrete GPU with pass-through, which is uh, something pretty cool for those who wanna do something a little bit different with the APUs. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Hit that dislike button twice and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and time to get started on that kernel control video. Thanks for watching.